Hello, Jenny here, Home Educating Mum to Six, and welcome to my channel, Yes You Can Home Educate. In this video, I will be talking to you about some of the things that you might need when you get started home educating. Some of the more essential things and the nice to haves, and maybe the things to save up for in the future if you're starting out with little ones. Keeping in mind that some people are on a budget and times are tough, so it's quite late and I've, we've had a bit of a cold running through our house, so please excuse the throaty voice. Hopefully it's not too off-putting. What are the main things that you're going to need when you get started? You're going to need a place to study. My three younger ones, we, we all sit at this kitchen table. In fact, this is the kitchen table. This is not a schoolroom. This is the far end of the kitchen. So if you don't believe me, I will show you. So you have a look, I will turn it around. There you go, keeping it real guys. That's our kitchen. So yes, it is not a schoolroom, if anyone was in any doubts. So yeah, place to study. My younger lot and me have spent a lot of time in the kitchen doing our studies. When we're sitting down sort of writing or whatever, we'll be in here. Um, my older ones, my boys especially, just quite happy to stay in their room at their desks. They have a de desk at their room, in their rooms. Sometimes my Miss 14 comes down, she wants a bit of company and she'll come and sit with us down here or she'll curl up in the living room or even my younger ones, if they wanna go and do a bit of reading, they'll find a spot in the living room or a conservatory, they'll go in the garden. Um, we do have a very small office. Uh, sometimes they'll use that. In fact, they've taken over that. It used to be my husband's, it's now the kids. So, but not everyone has six children, so you might not find that you have kids all over the house like this. But anyway, somewhere to study, and that can be their rooms, kitchen table, living room, the garden, the park, wherever you are. You know, that can be when you're out shopping and you're doing, you're explaining a bit of maths to them, or, you know, and they're rolling your eyes, saying, oh, mum, does everything have to be a learning lesson? Um, or the museum, the bench at the museum when you're looking at, or art gallery. It's their study, the place of studies anywhere. So that's the first thing. Then there's your basic things like stationery that you would probably get them anyway, even if they were at school, wouldn't you? And nowadays, I mean, you can just access everything just at the local supermarket, particularly for the little ones. Arts and craft kits, um, felt it, little chunky ones and crayons for little hands, or just all your stationery needs for your older ones. If you have a printer, which is very handy, I'll go onto that in a minute, but you know, reams of paper. Tesco's at the minute is the cheapest that I've found. You got a club card, get two reams of 400 sheets for seven pound, three pound 50 each, because things have gone up and that's the cheapest I've found anyway. Workbooks, so workbooks like this kind of workbook, sorry, it's the end of the year, they're not so nice looking anymore. <laughs> They've stuck stickers on them. Um, you can get a pack of 10 of them from Amazon uh, or you, you don't need to get them from Amazon. You can buy notebooks and work, uh, anywhere. You can buy little notebooks again from the supermarket, places like the Works, Wilco's, glues, scissors, depending on what, you're, what they're doing. Um, you know, for your older ones, geometry sets, all those things, all the obvious things. Then you'll need your curriculum materials and that all depends on what style of learning you're doing, what ages they are. But, you know, for my younger ones, I might I use things like this um, to supplement, a lot of to supplement sort of our main curriculum. We've got, we, we do use some books from America uh, for our language that I've discovered and wonderful. And well, that will be for another video, but things like this, handwriting, CGP is quite good for these kind of things, all the primary years, and they do revision books for the secondary students as well. Mathematics, go fill and sim, they do maths and language workbooks for all the ages groups as well, for all the year levels, um, comprehension, things like that. You can get water stones. Um, it's quite nice to go to Waterstones and go to the back of the Waterstones and have a look at all the educational materials. You'll find all things like that. You'll also find stuff in the works. This is what I do. I go to Waterstones, I look at all the educational materials and then I'll go on Amazon and I'll just see where's cheapest. 
and they have lots of really cool things such as like educational games like that. I didn't get that from Waterstones. I got that from Aldi. $3.99. So you get curriculum materials. Again, it doesn't have to break the bank. You might get an online subscription like Twinkle, Ed Place. Uh, I will do another video and go through all of that. But you might just use worksheets. You might not use those. You might just work from books, find textbooks. Some homeschoolers, particularly in the primary years, don't want to don't want to have a screen based education in any way shape or form I know people are just not interested in online classes or zoom classes and they just that and that works for them and that's what you know part of their their learning ethos we, we do use a computer and printouts we use a bit of everything in our approach to learning depending on your budget so you know there are student laptops that are relatively affordable. Again, with computers, you can spend as much as you like. You can get a student, a basic student laptop for around 300, 250, 300, or you can get something like this. So we've, we've got, a, we've got sort of, we've got a computer, we've got a laptop, and then we've got a couple of these. And it's a Kindle Fire, less than 150 pounds, because having six children, we need to sort of, we do have fights for devices. But that um, is a good buy. Kindle Fire, £150, or, well, it's not exactly that, it's around that, it's probably, less, I think it's less than that. And then, you know, you can get a relatively cheap printer as well. When you're researching for your printer, look at how much the cartridges, the refills are. There are some Eco Inkjet printers that are quite good, and the refills, you just buy the ink in bottles, and it's it's the best we've had. We've had some expensive printers, but the, we've, the one we've got now saved us so much money. So I'll find out what it is and I'll put it in the description below, the, my recommendation. Because long term, um, it might be a little bit more expensive for the printer, but you save on the ink in the long term. So, but anyway, you know, this sort of the cheapest thing, I guess, it would be something like this and a printer. And nowadays, you can just Bluetooth to the printer straight from the device and it just comes, you know, whatever printouts you want, whatever sh worksheets you want, and they're ready for your child to use. And then other nice things to have, yeah, like I said, little games, educational games. Again, this is more for primary, obviously. Um, oh my goodness, I got that from Aldi as well. Aldi's great. I just pop into Aldi every now and then, and they often have some great educational materials. This one for my little one, look at that. That's to teach them words. I don't know if you can tell, but that's like indented so they can start learning the letters and then writing. It's absolutely brilliant flashcards. But it's got all it's got all the letters of the alphabet and then she can just practice drawing on them. Um, what else? These are great. Two pounds. That was two pounds from Asda, but I, I'm sure you can get them in all the supermarkets. Um, it works again, Wilco's, a couple of pounds, less than, you know, two to, wouldn't be more than three pounds. Really useful, you get your whiteboard markers, great for little ones to practice writing as well. Great for explaining, working things out for children. Um, I've got this big one, that was not expensive, that was about seven pounds, and my husband screwed it to the wall. And I put the date on there every day, and. You know, we, it's quite useful again for explaining things to the children. Maths and manipulatives can be useful again. Nice to have, not necessary. Something like this, you can just explain. You can explain the maths on here. You know, drawing things, but nice to have. And I didn't get this straight away. It's something I sort of thought about for a long time, saved up a little bit for. It wasn't that expensive, but base ten, it's called. And the schools do use them, and they are quite useful for explaining again. You know, maths, um, you know, thousands, hundreds, you know, just working out additions and whatever, calculations, your tens and your ones. They're quite useful. But I wouldn't get that straight away. See if you need it. See if you, you know, if your child, your child might not need it, they might, they might do fine without things like that. Just drawing. Um, this one I was recommended to me. I didn't buy it straight away. I thought, oh, you know, I probably don't need it. And then I saw it in a charity shop 
Cold Cuisinera rods. Look, price is still on it, $1.99, absolute bargain. And this is just useful for, again, for maths. So that's a 10. Again, they're maths manipulatives, aren't they? And just to do, sort of explain, you know, the different numbers and number bonds. I think they sort of go together and they sort of explain for the little ones about how two and eight makes 10 or whatever. So all the different, all the different rods, cuisine air rods are quite useful. Nice to have. You find it at a charity shop for a 1.99. It's a bit of a bargain. You can buy science kits. Um, and we've done that. We haven't used them a whole lot. I get they're quite excited for them at the beginning, but fairly reasonable price. We've used it a bit, but again, it's not absolutely necessary. They can learn it for a video, but sometimes children learn by doing it themselves. You can get these things. Nice to have, but not essential. Art supplies. Again, you can get them fairly affordable. Places like Hobbycraft, The Works, even Aldi. There's um, prices to suit all budgets, isn't there? You'll find yourself building a, li a, a library of books. It's lovely to have, again, you know, again, you don't need to. You've got libraries. But, um, you know, with, with charity shops and secondhand books online, I always, whenever I go to find a book, a child, one of my children expresses an interest in a particular book, I always go on Amazon and then I'll look for uh, the, the used ones and see if there's any, you know, good quality used ones. Some of them are used but new or very good used and they come and it's and they they look almost new and you save a few pounds buying that those ones every time so yeah we do struggle for space for books so we've got shelves all over the house um, i'm always looking for nice classics you'll probably find yourself sort of building libraries of books lovely books and it doesn't have to break the bank so just to cover you need your you know place to place to study your basic stationery and art supplies, things like that. It, depending on your style of learning, books and workbooks, exercise books, curriculum books that you decide to use. Space to store them is important. Your tech devices that you might want to use, maybe an iPad or a computer and a printer. Many people find them essential, we do. And then your nice to haves, your little extra sort of educational add-ons that are nice to have, but not absolutely essential. And so, yeah, you can you can home educate uh, and all budgets. It's it's not too hard to get together the equipment that you need and, and get started educating. So I hope that helped. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I will put links below of the things that I've mentioned, the things that, I, um, that you may want to go and look up. If you liked this video and found it helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like and subscribed. And if you found it helpful and know others who might find it helpful too, please share. All right, see you in the next video. Bye and happy homeschooling.